Hello friends, this video on electric current and its effects part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we are going to talk about another important effect of current that is magnetic effect of current. Now we saw in the previous section that an electric current flowing through a wire is capable of producing heat. So now we will see that the same current is also capable of producing the effect that a magnet produces. So what comes to your mind when you think of magnets? So maybe something like this, uh, maybe a magnet attracting iron nails, that, that's a very common thing that comes to your mind whenever you take the magnet closer to the nails, they all tend to get attracted to the magnet. You might think of the fridge magnet. So you remember in your childhood or even maybe now also you do these things, you have beautiful fridge magnets and you put them on the fridge and uh, it changes the appearance of the fridge. You can also think of the magnetic doors, like a lot of doors, they, they have magnets attached to it because of which as soon as you tend to close it, it gets closes on its own. In fact, the doors of the refrigerator also have a magnet. That's because when you try to close the door of the refrigerator, just try to observe this. Now, as the uh, door comes very close to the surface, even if you are not pushing it, it goes on its own. That's because of the magnetic attraction. Think of the screwdriver, which has a magnetic tip. Now, why does it have a magnetic tip? Because normally a screwdriver has to deal with nails and nails get attracted to magnets. So it becomes easier to handle nails with a magnetic tip. The metro trains, if you have uh, ever observed it or experienced it, the doors of your metro trains, so they have also magnetic effect. That's why they open and they close on their own. So now when it comes to magnetic effects, we actually need to tell you that how electricity and magnetism were linked together because here we are going to talk about that as electric current flows through a wire, a magnetic effect is produced. So basically we are trying to connect these two different subjects, one is electricity, the other one is magnetism. So it was found that these two were very, very closely related. So what it is trying to say is, if you think of electricity, what you think, what can you think of? Maybe a bulb connected in a circuit to the battery and then what happens? The bulb starts glowing because electric current is flowing through the circuit. So that is electricity. And when you think of magnetism, it is like the nails are getting attracted towards the magnet. Why? Because in the region around this magnet, there is a force which exists and all these nails, they can experience that force and because of which they get attracted. So that is magnetism. Now, Oersted was the first scientist who observed that an interrelation exists between electricity and magnetism. Now, when he was the first one to perform an experiment which showed that even in a scenario like this where electric current is flowing through a wire where there is no magnet at all, so only this scenario, even in this case there is a magnetic field that is created around this current carrying wire. So basically this current carrying wire behaved like a magnet. So that was what was uh, proved by Oersted in his experiment. And that's why his experiment became very popular because during that time, nobody ever thought that electricity and magnetism could be related in any way because both of these appeared to be two different aspects of studies. Now, before we talk about Oersted experiment, it is very important to know more about magnetic compass. So magnetic compass is an instrument which indicates direction. So it was initially during the initial years it was used to show direction which is north which is south so those kind of direction now it was mostly used by people who used to travel over long distances through sea so when you are in the middle of water you don't get an idea about the direction you are heading to so that is where magnetic compass was extremely useful in those days so look wise it is a small circular device which appears like a clock but it doesn't show time, instead it shows direction. So as you can see here, north, east, west, south, so that's how it shows the direction. So you have a needle inside and this needle moves 
and tells you the direction. So this needle which exists inside is mounted on a pivot. So and that is why it is like free to spin. So it can spin freely. So you know, you understand what's a pivot, right? Like how uh, you have the spinning top. So it has its center which is like fixed and therefore the rest of its part can move freely. Similarly, if you think of anything which is hanging like this, a rod hanging from a thread. So this, all, this rod will balance itself because it, this center part acts as a pivot which is fixed. So here also the needle which is present inside, the center of the needle is on a pivot which is fixed and therefore the rest of it can spin freely. So as you keep the magnetic compass at a particular place, the magnetic needle which uh, spin quickly and it will point and show you the right direction. So this is how the needle would look like. Now this needle is actually a tiny magnet. So if you talk about the needle, so this is the most important part of the magnetic compass. So the needle is nothing but a tiny magnet. So this is how it works. So whenever you put this magnetic compass in front of a magnet, it shows some deflection. Why? Because this magnet tends to attract another magnet. Right, Because you would have uh, learnt in your junior grades that like poles attract each other, uh, like poles repel each other and unlike poles attract each other. So north pole and north pole will repel but north and south pole will attract each other. So some kind of force of attraction or repulsion will exist between two magnets. So here you have the needle and here you bring another external magnet. So the needle shows some deflection. So that is one very important property which was used and this, this is the reason why magnetic compass was used in Oersted experiment because it can tell you if a magnet is present around it or not. So whenever there is a deflection in the magnetic compass, you can uh, understand if there is a magnet present in the nearby location. So that's about the magnetic compass. So if you talk about the needle, this needle always points in the north-south direction. So if you look at the needle, in most of the cases, it has a red end and a blue end. Like one part, one side will be red, the other side would be blue. So here I have just shown it as a plain black line, but normally it is red and blue. So one part will point towards the north direction, the other would point towards the south direction. So wherever, so whenever you put that magnetic compass, so whichever is the alignment of the needle, that is nothing but the north-south direction. So you can decide accordingly that, I mean, which direction are you at. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.